Hi, everybody. How's everyone doing today? I am Casey Reese, and I am here at Wonders of Wildlife in Springfield, Missouri. Comment below where you guys are located at so we know if we're close to you and we can tell you what parks you're close to. So here in Springfield um, at the Wonders of Wildlife Aquarium, we have a museum and an aquarium where you can see anything from um, aquatic animals to penguins to even some really awesome eels. So we have many different ecosystems that we have here at Wonders of Wildlife. If you've ever been to Wonders of Wildlife, please write in the comments if you've ever been. So what we are going to do today, we are going to talk about a new mission that we have for mission conservation. So if you go to www.wondersofwildlife.org backslash mission dash conservation, then that can get you over to our website to where you can get information on downloading our app. So Agents of Discovery is going to be the app that you will download. So once you get onto our mission conservation website, then you can click the download on get the app. And that is how you download the app. Um, if you scroll down, then you will be able to find out the triggers that you can scan to play this AR game. So from here, I'm going to pass this over to Kendra and she is going to show you how to play one of our newest missions called the Smoky Bear Mission. Kendra? Hey, my name is Kendra. I work with Agents of Discovery. So I help run the app uh, that Wonders of Wildlife is using to host these awesome missions that are playable to you at home. And today I'm going to be talking a little bit about the Smoky Bear mission, which was created in partnership with the US Forest Service. So you'll see on the website here where I'm pointing um, that you can access the Smoky Bear mission uh, right from the website. Um, I've already gone ahead and clicked this play the Smoky Bear mission here link and it takes me to the Agents of Discovery website. So Smokey's special mission has special triggers and uh, you can access those triggers right here. Uh, you will scan the Smokey images. So if you just click this, um, then a whole bunch of images will pop up. And in order to play through the mission, all you do is hold up your phone to these images, scan them using uh, the Agents of Discovery app and it will unlock fun educational challenges that you can learn, uh, that you can play and learn about what Smokey has to say about wildfire safety. So I'm actually gonna show you right now um, one of these challenges. And this is just gonna take me a quick second to get ready. Um, I am going to show you an image of my phone on the screen right now. So hit allow, and here we are. So what you're seeing right here is what I'm seeing on my cell phone right now. Um, I've downloaded the Agents of Discovery app from the Google Play Store and I have searched up Smokey. And the first thing that pops up for me is the Smokey Bear's 75th birthday mission. Uh, this is the mission that we are going to be playing today. I'm just gonna go ahead and click play. Oh, we are having a little technical difficulty. I'm just gonna try this one more time. There we go, okay. So here we are on Smokey Bear's mission. Um, so Smokey says, hello and welcome to my special mission celebrating 75 years of wildfire prevention. During this secret mission, you will be able to learn uh, how to help me protect the lands where we live, work, and play from being harmed by preventable human-caused fires. As you play, look around you to see all of the beautiful lands and think about how you can safely enjoy them. Um, and I am going to tap to continue. Okay, so here we are uh, in Smokey's cabin. Um, as you guys can see, uh, we have all of these different markers here. Um, I have already actually played through one of these challenges today, so it's showing me a little check mark based on the one that I have played. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and select another marker right now. How about this one up in the top? Okay, so now what you're seeing is actually my camera um, on my phone. So Smokey says, be on the lookout for Smokey Bear up close. Um, I have pulled up already all of the trigger images from the Smokey Bear mission over on my computer. Um, so I'm going to scroll through these and look for the one that says Smokey Bear up close. This might be it, let's see. Nice work, I found Smokey Bear up close. And now it's going to give me a little challenge to play through. So there's all kinds of different challenges. Um, some of these, uh, some of these uh, are challenges that you can play by kind of spinning around in your location um, and seeing, uh, 
Oh, it looks like I'm having the same issue here. One second. Nope. Try one more time. Hmm. Uh, well, Casey, it looks like we might be having a little bit of an issue here. I might have to come back over to this, um, but let's try this one thing. Well. Kendra, that's okay if you can't get it started. We can just talk a little bit about um, some of our missions that we have coming up. So in September, we have a really awesome mission called Celebrating Public Lands. And this week we are partnered with the US Forest Service and we actually have some really awesome guests with us today that will be talking about the US Forest Service. So to get to the mission, you will have to download the Agents of Discovery app. And if you go onto our website, um, and you scroll down under schedule of missions and activities, you can actually find September's mission called Se September Celebrating Public Lands. So if you just click on that, then you will be able to um, unlock our activity guide. So those are just activities that you can do that correlate with um, our monthly mission. So with us today, we do have Sandy Frost and she is from the Blue Mountain Recreation Center or recreation area, sorry about that. Sandy, how are you doing today? I am doing well. Can you hear me okay? Absolutely. Okay, I'm, you know what, there's no one around me, so I'm going to get a little comfortable, take off my mask. We always want to recreate safely. And you know what, I'm going to take my cowboy hat off too, even though that's an official part of our uniform. But thank you so much. I'm so happy to be with you today, Casey and Kendra and Lucila and uh, Tom a little bit later. And I just want to welcome everyone who's watching uh, to your National Forests and Grasslands. And I am so proud uh, to work for our public lands. And, um, you know, there are, I don't know how many of you have been able to visit a national forest, a national park a National Wildlife Refuge, or even Bureau of Land Management lands. But all of those lands are owned by the, for, by the federal government, but they're owned for you. And when you add it all up, it's almost 640 million acres of America that belongs to the American public. And I was doing a little calculation that's as much as if you took Alaska, our biggest state, and Texas, our second biggest state, and added them together. That's the land that belongs to you. And you can do so many things on our public lands and on your national forests and grasslands, but I deeply feel the most important and the most special part of any of our public lands is that they really belong to you. And so I hope you take time to play that mission about your public lands and go out and explore the closest one to you. Well said, Sandy. So what does the US Forest Service do? Well, you know, we're, we're an old agency. Our first uh, chief forester was, uh, chief of the Forest Service was Gifford Pinchot. And that was way back in 1905 just about the time of Teddy Roosevelt. And, you know, the entire country was looking at this amazing uh, American uh, country. And, you know, there weren't all that many people. So there, there was a lot of uh, unoccupied land. But back then they did see that logging uh, in areas was creating huge problems for communities. When the rain would come, it would wash all the sediment into the creeks. So in 1905, they created the Forest Service uh, to protect uh, our forests, but also our water. So not many people think of the Forest Service with water, but that's a, a really important part of the Forest Service. And since that time, gosh, uh, our agency is a multiple use agency which means that people can hunt and fish on national forests. They can log uh, within certain uh, 
you know, sideline uh, sideboards and they can mine, they can recreate, they can do research, they can just walk and hike and have a great time. Uh, so there are many, many uses that happen on national forests and they're incredibly diverse. So I spent a long time in Alaska which has our two largest national forests, but from the temperate rainforests of Alaska, all the way down to the tropical rainforests of Puerto Rico, uh, there's over 154 national forests and grasslands scattered across the entire United States, about 193 million acres. And that's like if you took California and added Montana to it, that's how much land is in your national forests and grasslands. Wow, that's a lot of land for everyone to use. That it is really, really cool. It really so, is. Sandy, where are you at right now? Well, I'm in a beautiful place. I live in Missoula, Montana, uh, which is a gorgeous place to live. I'm so lucky. Uh, it is in the northwestern corner of Montana. I'm only about half an hour from Idaho from here. And I'm on the Lolo National Forest. And uh, this area is the Blue Mountain Recreation Area. And gosh, just as I've been standing out here enjoying things for the last uh, few minutes, I've seen people on horses ride past. There's joggers and there's do and their dogs. There's just hikers. This is a really popular recreation area uh, that is public land that's part of the Lolo National Forest. And it's a really well-loved place right next to Missoula, Montana. Wow, it looks absolutely beautiful. It is beautiful. It's a little smoky today and we'll get to that uh, later on, but um, it is uh, just a little bit smoky and you can actually smell the smoke today. Wow, so speaking of smoky, I've heard that the US Forest Service partnered with Agents of Discovery to create that uh, mission, uh, the Smoky Bear mission. Do you, Absolutely. can you talk about that a little bit? Absolutely, you know, uh, probably in all the Forest Service, Smoky Bear is our most famous uh, person. <laughs> and uh, Smokey, since way back in the 1940s, Smokey Bear has always had a consistent uh, message. And I bet you everyone watching has seen Smokey Bear commercials or heard about or even maybe even met Smokey Bear. But Smokey Bear really, really focuses on what you can do to prevent forest fires. And uh, in the um, uh, in the last handful of years, the message has changed just a little bit. And, and today we talk about wildland fires. So they're not always fires that, you know, burst out and, and escape um, are not always in forests. So we've broadened it to uh, be wildland fires. And um, uh, last year was Smokey's 75th birthday. And in celebration of that, we worked with Agents of Discovery to create a special Smokey Bear mission. And uh, we've had such wonderful cooperation and support from so many partners. And I especially want to uh, uh, shout out and, and call out Edison International, who has been a fabulous partner and has made our Smokey mission uh, uh, accessible and uh, especially valuable um, to, to kids, families, teachers in Southern California. And, um, and you can play the mission, you can learn about what you can do for, to prevent forest fires, and uh, it, it's just a, a, a great way to, um, it's a great way to do what you can to help the situation right now. You know, I did mention that things are really smoky uh, here, very hazy. I see some blue way up above. It's about 57 degrees out here in Missoula uh, today. Um, and probably many of you know that there are huge fires uh, burning in California, Oregon, and Washington. Some of the most severe fires they've ever had in those environments. And that's where the smoke is coming all the way from California here to Montana. And Casey, you had mentioned you were even getting smoke in, in Springfield, Missouri. So uh, this is really a, a catastrophic uh, event 
Um, we have about 35,000 people who work in the Forest Service or work for the Forest Service. About a third of those are dedicated to wildland fire prevention and control. And everyone in the Forest Service is working on fires, all hands on deck, doing what we can to help contain those fires. And I'm sure many of you have heard of, you know, stories of communities being threatened, homes being burned, and, and even people being killed. So it's, you know, it, it, it's really important that, you know, what you can do to help is learn those safety messages so you're not creating a fire. A large proportion of our fires are caused by people. So uh, just learning some simple, uh, some simple safety rules can, can help us all down the road. Wow, Sandy, thank you. So I did hear that we had a special guest tweeting about us today. Do you wanna go into detail about that? Oh, I am so excited. Thank you, Casey. I'm so excited. Uh, uh, 10 years ago, uh, the amazing Betty White, uh, and you guys probably know who Betty White is, the amazing elderly person who's just all over uh, everything. And, and uh, uh, Betty White was made a Forest Service Honorary Ranger. And uh, I, I was actually, I got to be there when they made her the Honorary Ranger. And I have to tell you, I had big tears in my eyes because what she said, and she's 90, eight years old now. Uh, what she said was that when I was a little girl, I loved the forest. I wanted to be in the forest, but I couldn't be a forest ranger back then. But today I am. And, you know, it just so touched me because that's what I get to do for my career. It wasn't available to Betty White uh, at that time. So she is just an icon for the Forest Service. And today, just an hour or so ago, Betty White tweeted out, uh, uh, tweeted about the Smokey Bear uh, uh, mission and encouraging everyone to do it. So if you get that tweet, uh, retweet it, play the mission, share it, but we're just so thankful uh, for to Betty White for making this a very special day for all of us. Wow, that really is heartwarming, Sandy. So before we move on to our next guest, I have one last question to ask you. What is your favorite thing to do in a public land? Oh, my Oh, okay, so my absolutely favorite thing, I mentioned that I lived in Alaska for a long time, and um, I, I lived in a wonderful community called Cordova, uh, on the ocean on Prince William Sound, and uh, on the Copper River Delta, which is the largest wetland on the Pacific coast of North America. It's part of the Forest Service, which means it belongs to all of you folks. And the Copper River Delta is the most important staging area for Western sandpipers in the world. And Western sandpipers are little bitty birds that go all the way down to Panama, Mexico, even into South America to spend their winter. And then in spring, they come back to Alaska to lay eggs and, and uh, produce the next generation of sandpipers. And in a uh, about an eight day period, five, excuse me, 15 million sandpipers will move through the Copper River Delta. And my favorite, my best memory, my favorite thing is to be out on the mudflats of the Copper River Delta with the Western Shorebird, uh, Western Sandpiper migration moving in. You have birds all around you and flocks of sandpipers in the air. And it's just a magical, magical time. And uh, there are many, many other wonderful places and events uh, in your national forest all across the country. But for me, that's my, that's the one that I remember best. And it's someplace that I always want to go back to in early May. Andy, it's truly inspiring having somebody who is so passionate about the outdoors out in the US Forest Service. So I'd like to say thank you so much for being yeah. on here today. Um, next, we are going to hear from Lucila Fernandez, and she is a natural resources specialist over in DC. Uh, Lucila? Hi, thanks so much for having us, and thanks to Sandy for sharing all of that enthusiasm and information about the Forest Service. 
Um, especially uh, that story about seeing Western sandpipers. I'm a huge bird nerd myself, and we will talk about all the ways that you can enjoy the vastness of public lands that are available to you in the Forest Service Network, but also um, within other federal um, uh, agencies. Um, but a lot of people, um, when they think of federal lands, they think of these large grand national forests, these national parks, national monuments, but public lands also includes parks that are close by to you. And so we'll talk about that and how to um, celebrate those in the many ways um, that Sandra mentioned and some other ways um, that you can do off um, on your computer from home or on the sidewalk um, right outside using apps like Agents of Discovery. So let's go ahead and dive right in. I have a quick little um, slideshow that I can show you and then I will show you um, some websites of how you can find the tools that we're gonna talk about. So I'm just gonna do, hop onto a screen share really quickly. And there we go. All right, so Sandy was talking about these incredible public lands that are available for you to go out and enjoy them in all the ways that you find um, enjoyable to you. And something that we wanted to share um, that's coming up that is an invitation for you to go out and discover our public lands is National Public Lands Day. The official day of this celebration is September 26th, but really it's an invitation to go out and discover the land closest to you all throughout the month of September and early October. National Public Lands Day is a national campaign celebrating public lands hosted by an organization called the National Environmental Education Foundation this is a congressionally chartered organization uh, made to complement the Environmental uh, Protection Agency, but it's also, uh, NEEF is also a pretty big partner for the Forest Service. So Sandy mentioned that we work with a lot of on the ground partners. Um, Edison International is a great example of one. NEEF is a really big partner for us in, in coordinating and organizing campaigns like National Public Lands Day, but also uh, educa environmental education curriculum that we distribute all across the country. Um, and I'm so excited to be able to share with you about some of these other public land networks, because through the Forest Service, we work directly with states um, and with, pr with private landowners uh, to be able to make uh, public land available and accessible to all of the, uh, the public that, that can go out and enjoy those lands. So I see that there's a few folks in the chat. Um, and Casey, I might count on you to kind of call out some of the responses, but I thought it could be kind of fun to ask everyone watching today, what are some ways that you like to connect to nature? So I'll pause here and just let you kind of respond. Um, and I invite some of the other um, guests that are here on the call to go ahead and just kind of popcorn um, some responses while we wait for uh, folks on the chat. So for me personally, um, we have one person, oh, we have somebody popping up. Somebody loves to hike is what I have on here. Misty Mitchell, she loves to hike. For me personally, I am very outdoorsy. Um, I enjoy going outside and um, going on hikes. I love water activities, water sports, kayaking and paddle boarding are definitely my passion. Um, here in Springfield, Missouri, we have a lot of really cool, really beautiful hiking trails. Uh, one of my favorites to go to is called Ha Ha Tonka. Um, it has some castle ruins out, um, out in uh, Lake of the Ozarks area. So that's one of my favorite places to go. Cool, thanks so much for sharing that, Casey. And um, to, um, to the folk, uh, the person who shared about hiking. Those are all really great ways to interact with public lands. I have a photo here of some folks that are running on a trail in a city park. That is a public land and is a great way to engage and interact with that space. For me personally, I really love watching birds. So I sometimes hop over um, to, 
to 14 of the National uh, Park Service sites that we have here in Washington, D.C. And I might just sit down and bask in the sun and watch some birds. Um, some folks go out and take photographs of flowers and plants. They might just have a picnic. These are all perfectly acceptable ways to celebrate uh, the campaign National Public Lands Day. This is really all about you and how you interact with the green space that's available to you in your surroundings, um, but also within our Forest Service and public land network. So what's really exciting about this year, due to the pandemic, um, we, are, uh, we have encouraged a lot of um, public land sites to host virtual events. So this includes talks, uh, live streams, just like we're doing today. Uh, it includes using apps like Agents of Discovery. Um, for folks who are familiar with it, um, there's cell phone apps where you take photos and it uses um, uh, machine learning to generate responses of what you're taking a photo of. So think, for example, iNaturalist or picture this, and it will give you an idea of what, the, what you're looking at. And these are all ways that you can encourage uh, learning and interaction um, with public lands from the comfort of your own home or if you go to a park that's close to you. And just because we're running short on time, I want to show you a really cool tool that you can use to find both virtual events and in-person events that are going on in your locale and beyond um, in celebration of National Public Lands Day. So I'm just going to hop over to a website. So if you go to needusa.org, this is the website that is hosting the campaign. And you can go to National Public Lands Day. Oh, no, I might be out on my internet. Well, I'm just going to hop. I have the site queued up, so I'm just going to go ahead and show it to you here. There is a, an event locator. And I, know, I think Casey has this link. So Casey, um, if you don't mind dropping this into the chat for people to find, um, this event locator. NPLD stands for National Public Lands Day. And if you're curious about what's going on around you, you can enter your zip code. So I'm just gonna enter a zip code in DC. And I can put type of event, virtual or in person. I'm just gonna go ahead and put any, just to kind of hit search events. And I'm sorry, I'm having some challenges with my internet. But if you were to um, put in your zip code, it will find events near you. And what that will look like is this. You'll see a map of these events and they're labeled by color um, to indicate whether they're virtual or local. Now, like I mentioned, public land includes uh, parks that that are, are close to you. Um, some folks don't have the benefit of living right next to one of the big national parks or big national forests. But often we don't realize that there are national parks and national forests and BLM lands that are right in our own backyard, so to speak. So like I mentioned in my city of DC, there's 14 parks um, that exist across the city that are federal public lands for me to go out and enjoy. So how do you find these public lands you ask? The Forest Service has a website called discovertheforest.org where you can put in your address or your zip code and it will generate a map of public lands that are available to you in your locale. So I go ahead and uh, queued up a search. So let me just go ahead and pull that up for you to see. And these are all little drop pins of sites that are close to me. And then there's a full list of places where I can go and enjoy a, a public land. And what's really fun is that this website also includes activities that you can download and create your own national public land celebration. So if you uh, see a virtual talk um, coming out of Missoula, Montana, and you're inspired to celebrate National Public Land Day in your own, uh, in your own city or in your own town, uh, you can go to discovertheforest.org and look up at a public site where you can go and use one of the activities from their website and have your own celebration. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it at that just because we're short on time. Um, but thank you so much for tuning in today. And I hope that uh, you have an opportunity to go out and celebrate public lands. If you do, please um, feel free to and encouraged to post about it and uh, tag hashtag NPLD2020.
Awesome. Thank you so much, Lucila. Thank you for those resources and sharing those. And um, we just wanted to wrap up and say thank you guys so much. Um, and like everybody partnered with us today has talked about um, the importance of public lands is our biggest issue that we're talking about this month. So public lands are super important because they sustain our fish and wildlife and they give us places to recreate. So um, go out into nature, go get lost somewhere, go on a hike, go paddling, go do what you enjoy to do out <laughs> Uh, we just wanted to say thank you again so much for stopping in and next week we will be live with Boone and Crockett so please stay tuned and we will see you then. Thank you.